Hey miners, I'm Sarah Manter and I'm here to offer you a little crypto coaching. Today I'm going to talk about the timing of the payout process for FPPS miners at ProHashing. We receive a lot of questions from customers about why payouts occur every 24 hours when they see them occurring more frequently at other pools, which is a fair question. The simple answer is there are a series of unpredictable steps in between when you reach your payout threshold and when the coins arrive at your wallet. I don't know about you, but when I'm expecting a package these days and it's three days late, I am all over that app trying to figure out where it went. I'd rather them estimate the delivery times on the high side and be pleasantly surprised when they arrive earlier. We expect to pay you out within 24 hours, but sometimes it can arrive a little earlier depending on some of those unpredictable steps I mentioned. Paying out once a day also results in more profit for you. With FPPS mining, shares are constantly being submitted and the miners doing the submitting are being consistently compensated. Each submitted share goes toward that miner's payout proportions, but that miner may not have elected to be paid in the coin that they have been mining. In these cases, there may be an imbalance between which blocks we found and how many coins we owe out to people who've submitted shares. For example, we may have recently mined a block of Litecoin, but we may have a lot of customers setting Bitcoin to their payout proportions. This is why we're constantly rebalancing to make sure we're ready for payouts. Every five minutes, our software assesses the submitted shares and the coins we have on hand, and it decides if we have enough of each requested coin to pay out if we were to have to pay out right now. It rebalances the coins if needed by executing trades. We send some of the Litecoin we've mined to an exchange so we can acquire the Bitcoin we need to issue payouts in the correct proportions. Doing the rebalancing frequently in these five minute chunks helps us to keep current with the market and the coin prices. This way, if there's a huge run on one coin at some point and the price skyrockets, we don't lose value having to trade for coins at a higher price. Once we've acquired the coins we need through the exchange, the coins need to be sent to our wallet on the network. The exchange needs time to process the withdrawal, and ProHashing doesn't have any control over how long it takes the exchange to process a requested withdrawal. The exchange needs to create a transaction to send us the coins, and the block has to be found. The time for a transaction to be confirmed depends on what the person or the business creating the transaction is willing to pay in transaction fees. I'll explain this a little more later on, but basically the higher the fee they're willing to pay, the faster the transaction will be confirmed and ProHashing has no control over what an exchange is willing to pay for a transaction. This makes the amount of time for an exchange's transaction to be confirmed less predictable. Once the exchange's transaction is confirmed, we receive the coins and then we have to create our own transaction to send the amount to our customers. Here we go through the same process as the exchange. There is the wait for the transaction to be confirmed in a block. While we can estimate, we don't know exactly how long it will take for the block to be found and our transactions to be confirmed, but the more quickly we want the transaction confirmed, the more expensive it gets. Like I said, when talking about the exchange's transactions, I'll explain more about what's involved with the timing and the cost of this later on. Withdrawals to start the payout process are processed at midnight following a balance becoming eligible for payout. As I said earlier, we promise a 24-hour window from that point to account for the time to process the withdrawal, the time for the exchange's transaction to be confirmed, and the time for our transaction to be created and confirmed to send the money to you. This also allows us time to take manual actions if something goes wrong with processes that are typically automated. 
As I mentioned earlier, the amount of time a transaction takes to be confirmed is based somewhat on what the person or the business creating the transaction is willing to pay in transaction fees. I'm going to take you over to bitcoinfees.earn.com to show you what I mean. If you look over here on the left, you can see the transaction fees broken down by Satoshis per byte. Satoshis are the smallest unit of Bitcoin and equal one millionth of a Bitcoin. On the right here, we can see the estimated number of blocks it might take to get our transaction confirmed if we were to pay the number of Satoshis on the left. On the right, they also give you the estimated amount of time this process might take for a transaction to be confirmed if we pay this transaction fee on the left. The number of minutes, however, can fluctuate a little bit based on conditions. So if the hash rate is a lot higher, the amount of time might decrease as much as a couple hours on some of these levels of the chart. This is why it's hard to predict exactly how long all of this process is going to take and the reason for our 24 hour payout times. If we scroll down and follow along on the left, we can see that the price is increasing. And on the right, we can see that the number of blocks and the amount of time is decreasing. So if we scroll all the way down, we can see that a zero to 30 minute transaction confirmation would take about 101 Satoshis, which at current prices and conditions would equal about $289. We could choose this confirmation time for each payout transaction to make sure that our transactions were confirmed in the very next block or that they took 30 minutes or fewer. However, it would end up costing us about $105,700 per year. That's money that's needed for things like paying a developer to do things like adding new algorithms, upgrading our systems to the newest technologies, or making sure our system stays stable and functioning properly. So fees that high would end up needing to be passed down to the customers, cutting into your profits quite a bit. However, if we scroll back up to the middle of the road, we could pay 63 Satoshis per byte, worth about $180 at the moment. And the confirmation time would increase to about 300 minutes or five hours. Like I said, that wouldn't always be five hours. Sometimes it might be closer to three, depending on conditions. If we were to pay the $63 transaction fee at today's prices and conditions on December 14th, 2021, accepting the longer confirmation time would reduce our transaction cost by $106 per transaction. Instead of paying $105,700 per year, in these transaction fees, it would bring our yearly cost down to $65,932 for the year. That's about $40,000 a year saved by waiting a few extra hours each time for the transactions to go through, a cost that you as a customer are now not responsible for. Mining pools who are charging withdrawal fees to the customers they might be willing to pay higher transaction fees to get the transactions to be included more quickly because they're passing that cost down to the customer. We want our tra transactions to be confirmed in a reasonable amount of time without cutting into anyone's profit. So we generally aim for about three hours. Here's another reason we pay out only once every 24 hours. Transaction fees can fluctuate quite a bit depending on the current conditions or the coin being sent, sometimes reaching or even exceeding $60 per single transaction. I discussed this in the previous video, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. The link is in the video details down below and the card up above. At times when the transaction fees are running this high, each time we send coins on the network, we incur that $60 fee, regardless of how much we're sending. 
if we were to create a transaction once an hour for 24 hours, that would be $60 times the 24, equaling $1,440 for one day's worth of transaction fees to send smaller balances more frequently to just one person, instead of sending the $60 once to send a larger balance. Paying out just the once in a 24 period also allows us to pay out multiple customers in one transaction and divide the fees among them all, which also reduce, reduces the fees per customer, in turn eliminating the need to pass down the fees to the customer. More ramen for you. So what are the takeaways of this video? Prohashing is rebalancing coins every five minutes to be prepared for when customers reach their payout thresholds. We do try to be as efficient as possible to make sure that it doesn't take any longer than necessary for you to receive your money. We can't predict how long it will take for an exchange to process a withdrawal, and we can't control what transaction fees the exchange is willing to pay for the transaction to be confirmed which has an impact on the timing of our payouts. We can estimate when each block should be found based on the block times, but we can't predict with certainty how long it will take for our transactions to be confirmed so that we can pay out. Frequent payouts can cost significantly more for both ProHashing and the customers than once a day payouts. When we set anything from free payout thresholds to payout schedules, we do so with the goal of maximizing profits as much as possible for everyone in the most transparent way possible. Don't forget to check out the video on payout fees if you haven't already, as it offers some insight into what each step of the payout process costs for ProHashing and what does and doesn't get passed down to the customer. I hope our videos have been helpful to you so far and if they have, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. See you next time, miners.